Well, I guess we got to talk case. about Raw. Well? Hey, you know what? Whatever you want to say about Raw, that main event was awesome. That yeah. main event was awesome. You guys want to go back and tell me the last time you saw a uh, sleeper suplex on a, uh, a WWE program? That was a almost a Japanese style ending. Needed three almost. Big moves. It well, was a hundred percent a Japanese. And you know what's funny about it is, I thought Chad was dead, and then they showed the a sleeper? replay, <laughs> and then I thought he was dead, and then they showed that third replay, and it was like, his hair touched the mat, and nothing else. Pros. Because this man, this Gunther, this bloke is uh, he's unreal. He so, is. Jey Uso's on the show. Cody Rhodes has brought him in. They're acknowledging that a lot of people don't like this guy. And uh, Sammy does come out, and he does endorse him. You finally got away. You finally did what was right. You're free. I just want you to know, we may not be best buds, but I'm proud of you. And he offers a handshake. And Jay just puts his hands behind his back, and Sammy says, Well, if you ever want to talk, I'm here. And he goes to leave. Jay says, well, that wasn't very UC of me, was it? And they hug, and this place goes nuts. You know, the 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 biggest, the most over move in wrestling is in 2023 is the hug it out. Yes. These fans, they love them some hugging. An emotional, manly embrace between two competitors. This is where we're at right now. It's a different era for all those people stuck in the past. Hey, you may have liked when guys wore leather helmets out there, but at some point, things change, and... This is where the fan base is at, and you give them what you want. And that's what both WWE and AEW, as much as it may annoy some, they do definitely give you that. You know, this Vince McMahon, I'm not going to say he wasn't a genius at times. He was the greatest promoter ever, till he wasn't. But uh, you, know what else he, you know what else he was? An idiot. He was an idiot, okay? Because there were certain things that like he just didn't get. And he always was so into the idea of we must get heat and these people need to not like each other and these people need to turn on each other and all this and that. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, it's wrestling and people do need to turn on each other here and there. But if all people do is turn on each other and not like it, the same thing with Russo was the same thing. It was like he was always putting people together that didn't like each other and it was always a a turn and a swerve. And the fact of the matter is, if you really want to get heat, what you need to do is let people be friends and really like each other for a long time. And then when one of them turns on the other, then you actually have heat. Exactly. You can see watching wrestling in 2023 that fans aren't like, oh, man, we love to see people fight all the time and not like each other. You know, fans actually do like when people are friends. When people have friends and they hug and they're like nice to each other, a concept Vince has absolutely no concept of in his life. So, you know, you can see it here. They want people to be happy. They want people to be friends. And you need to give it to them. And you need to give it to them for an exceptional amount of time before you pull the trigger. Then it means something. It's a manipulation of emotion. That's what heat is. And you also have to take the temperature of your fans, though, you know, to make that happen. Or or you end up in a situation like we had with the post-attitude era of everything was just so mean-spirited. It was a slog to get through those shows. Everybody turned on everyone constantly that it was... Again, who do you root for? You need to have, yeah, you need to have people sitting in the shades of gray, but you also need to have bright spots on both sides for the contrast. All right, I got to get through this. We had uh, we had the Viking Raiders versus Drew and Riddle. They, uh, they pinned Riddle after Kofi Kingston, like a total cheater, ran down to try to help the baby faces, and he accidentally hit uh, Riddle, Valhalla. Riddle with his, his spot and that whole deal trying to help so uh they're having problems drew's strongly teasing he's turning heel any time seth did a promo this was the stupidest thing on the show and that includes the miz segment the miz segment sucked in a different way but like the story is seth beat nakamura clean seth comes out he's angry that he left in a wheelchair and nakamura didn't so the champion challenges the challenger and he says the only way he'll accept is if i put the title on the line here tonight so nakamura the challenger comes out 
doesn't want the championship match. This makes Seth mad. They get into a brawl. Nakamura takes him out. And then Ricochet comes down, and Nakamura, who did not want to wrestle on this show for the world heavyweight title, wrestles Ricochet. What? (laughs) So this also goes to a DQ. This was the stupidest thing. I mean, this was unfathomably stupid. And I guess we'll see if they can fix it next week or if it'll remain stupid. We had a Judgment Day promo. JD came out. And long story short, they set up Sammy versus JD, and the Judgment Day is keeping an eye on him. See if he deserves being in the group. Shayna Baszler choked out Zoe Stark on her fourth attempt, by the way. They gave Zoe multiple escapes. And then uh, they put each other over as being tough, and it looks like they're going to end up being a tag team. Then we had Raquel beating Chelsea, who is one half of the Women's Tag Team Champions. I don't know why. Uh, by the way, um, the former Dewdrop, uh, whatever her name is now. Viper, uh, Vi- Piper, uh, Piper, Niven. Piper Niven. Yes. Uh, they said she was not medically cleared. She's actually sick, so she should be back soon. But anyway, Raquel squashed her. That set up the match for next week without Dom. We had the absolute stupidest Miz promo. I get it. I know what he was doing. I know the John Cena meme. We can't see him. It sucked. I, it was so bad I fast-forwarded it, which I can't remember the last time I did that. It was one of the stupidest segments ever. I hated it, and it was dumb. Then we, and by the way, I mean, I don't want to hear about, I just hate Miz or whatever, because Miz and L.A. Knight have had two talking segments in the last week, and they have both been excellent. Miz on his own, talking to the invisible John Cena, was an atrocity that aired on my television, and I can't explain why. Sammy lost to J.D. J.D. beat him with distraction from Dom, and it looks like J.D. may end up in the Judgment Day. We had a segment where uh, Dom tried to recruit Jay to the Judgment Day. Would not expect that to take place. And then uh, finally, Gunther and Chad Gable for the Intercontinental title. A fantastic match. Gunther was Brian Danielson. Chad Gable was poor Ricky Starks. He just tortured this guy. He chopped him. And then finally, Chad makes this big comeback. And I don't know how. I do not know how. But Chad did a superplex and a diving headbutt, and th- these fans went crazy. And they counted along, and, th- and a lot of them even counted three. They thought it was the finish. They thought Chad Gable was going to pin Gunther in this match. How? But it, the answer is because they're both awesome. And finally, Gunther fought out. He hit a sleeper suplex, which looked terrifying. He power bombed him through the mat. He clotheslined him to death, and he pinned him, and now Gunther is. Now, people always go, ah, nobody ever gets over from developmental. Name somebody that's come up and done well. Yeah, maybe Gunther. He's the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time. He's had one loss on the main roster in over a year, and it was a countout to Gable to set this match up. He's the greatest. I'm calling it down granny's memory lane are you reading for your memoirs yes no no okay. no that's past oh okay this yeah, is new stuff this is more up to date you know I'm i more... see okay this is the more recent stuff yeah new old stuff i just no saw. no okay no, no. <laughs> the new <laughs> testament everyone let her go we lived on a farm 10 miles east of baker more yeah. recent you say <laughs> i was gonna say this is a new no, this is old it's old okay okay it's who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're just going to be not, quiet. And you, am I out of you, my mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm fining Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined $100. Oh. It was Martels and Hebes. Hebes? Was Martel. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. <laughs> yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes? The daughter, Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.